You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell. Sponsored by Absolute Mortgage, a division of Pinnacle Capital Mortgage Corporation. Now, in the studio, local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, October 15th show. I am dedicated to you, my listener, providing you with the tools needed to make informed decisions decisions on matters that affect your money. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but you can always call the show at one 855 400 Again, that's one 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com for any questions from my guests or anything that you would like from uh, myself, your host. And right now, my conversation is with Carrie Scott, with John L. Scott. We're going to be talking about the state of the real estate market here in our local market. Carrie, thank you so much for coming back and joining me in studio. Thanks for having me, Tina. And a little bit about Carrie. Carrie is top 1% John L. Scott agents for 2015, president and elite ward for outstanding production 2010 through 2015. Five Star Real Estate Agent Award, Seattle Magazine, Certified Luxury Home Marketing Specialist, Accredited Staging Professional, International Associates Home Staging Professional, uh, Certified quality, quality Street Agent, Group Leader Mentor for Brian Buffini, Regional Manager, Team Member for Brian Buffini, and Member of John L. Scott Foundation, Peak Group Leader Experience, and Peak Performer Class Facilitator. Carrie has lived and conducted business in the Seattle metro area for the past 20 years. She's recognized as one of the top agents agents in Seattle metro area. 90% of her business is repeat and referral due to her Nordstrom quality of service. Carrie uses her time, energy, and resources to invest in client relationships. Her approach of investing in clients give them the trust and confidence to not only use her again, but to refer her to their family, friends, and associates. Uh, Carrie's team includes Lynn Sterling, her full-time licensed assistant, who also offers you top-notch service, a wealth of knowledge, and willing spirit to do whatever it takes to get the job done. She is also consistently in the top 1% of John Oak Scott company-wide 2000 through 2015, and I'm sure it's going to roll right into 2016, <laughs> uh, Carrie. So wealth of experience and knowledge that you have, and uh, really excited to kind of break down what you think the stage of the market is here uh, in our market for um, uh, Seattle. What or um, the Pacific Northwest? What has the market been doing through 2016? Give uh, give us a uh, recap for that, Carrie. Well, after 2015, we thought we woke up on January 1st of 2016 and said, "Oh my God, can we do this again?" Mm-hmm. And it started off a little bit slower, like first January and February, because there just was no inventory. And then a few things started to perk up and people say, well, when do the houses show up? And I say, when the tulips and the flowers show up and daylight's a little longer, so mm-hmm. do the buyers and sellers. Yes. And that that really deemed to be true because we started about March and suddenly inventory started coming up and then the buyers were ready and eager and they've been waiting a few months. And that's when we've had all these insane bidding wars yes. and people offering between 8 and 22% over the asking price. And one house may have 14 pre-inspections and... Buyers were going to their parents and getting money and when they because they, they knew they had to have financing, but to be mm-hmm. competitive with a the seller, there was so much cash in our market. Yes. We have a very huge international market that's coming in where there's lots and lots of cash. And the hometown people were really having a hard time competing with all those suitcases of money coming from other countries. Yeah. So they got creative. Yes. Well, and you know, so it's last year in, in my arena with mortgages, we were asking about interest rates because every year the anticipation is interest rates have to go up. And so that's one of the cause of what's happening in the real estate market, lack of inventory, low cost to borrow causes just not enough properties to go around for everybody. But people were still getting mortgages. They were still getting mortgages, yes. But what they yes. were doing is they were like taking their retirement or they were um, borrowing money from a, from a family mm-hmm. member and then immediately at closing having their mortgage consultant like you yes. come and get them a mortgage and they pay their family back. Yeah, that's, you know, it's just even to think about that of, of going out and, and really having the ability to come up with $500,000 cash, mm-hmm. a resource to do that. And it's funny that you say that because, um, uh, you know, I've, I, I've heard that strategy before where uh, consumers, 
it's they would never have, have thought to need to do that or even have the resources. And it's amazing how many actually do. So, uh, Carrie, what about the market now? So where are we right now today? Well, I think this year in 2016, we peaked in May, June and July, where we just had record numbers of sales. In fact, we're having a little appraiser shortage. So it's yes. been harder to get the appraisers out there because mm-hmm. there's been buyers have really wanted to take advantage of this market and sellers have too because the prices are up and the buyers were pretty much doing everything they could with handstands in your front yard to make you want to take their offer. Yes. So then we hit into August and that's always a seasonal slowdown that we always see a little bit of people on vacation, people, mm-hmm. you know, they're getting their kids ready to go back to school. But it slowed down, and then it picked back up in September again. And my market times right now are between four and seven days average. Yeah. Still, we're not getting like 14 offers. Well, I was just going to say, I've noticed, unless it's just my clients, but it seems like there's not as many, there's multiple offers, but not the 14. And, and no pre-inspections. So why, why is that, Carrie? Why are we seeing, because there's no more inventory. I mean, the inventory is not improved. So how come there are less people making an offer on the same property? Is it because we're getting into the holidays? Well, I think that it's an election year. So let's talk about that. What? How is the election year affecting uh, real estate? Well, statistically, every time we have uh, an opportunity to have a new presidential, uh-huh. uh, you know, what do I want to say, candidate or yes. elected president, mm-hmm. the economy, people, there's a little consumer confidence issues that yeah. come up where people think, well, what's going to happen if their person doesn't get put in the White House? Yes. And so people sit back and they look and they just kind of they just kind of kick it back a little mm-hmm. bit and they just want to pay attention, keep their money mm-hmm. where they know where it's going to be yeah. so they can feel confident that whatever happens, they can weather the storm of whatever happens in the White House. Yeah. So So, a call to action really is because real estate has always been the safest investment and I can't think of a better place to put it unless you're doing a short term and trying to flip a home, a whole other conversation. But if you're going to be in real estate, if you're buying and selling, if you're a renter, thinking about being a first time home buyer, do it right now because there's not that same craziness out there. And once we get through the election and we get through the holidays, mm -hmm. um, you're going to be out doing the exact same thing that everybody else is. So take a little twist, right? Right. It's a little different. I don't see as uh, in the Northwest really having an issue right now because our our job growth is huge yes there's like 107 new um, tall buildings being built Mm -hmm. downtown seattle you know google expedia facebook um starbucks microsoft those are the anchors amazon they're hiring thousands of people a month i work with a ton of relocations that come from all over the world to work for some of these companies Mm -hmm. and our market is really strong and that's why we still have kind of a shortage of inventory yes and for the buyers that are saying i'm just going to go out and take advantage of what's happening right now they can almost they don't have to be like you know hurry get set go and then think about what you did later they can they can just have more they can have the collective exhale and think okay i'm gonna have an inspection and Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna give away my firstborn child and yes (laughs) i'm actually gonna just do this in a nice timely manner and for me I've enjoyed it more. When you have market times mm-hmm. that are like two days, that's stressful. Yes. When you have four to seven or maybe four to ten days on market, it just makes the process so much more enjoyable for a buyer and for the seller. Yeah, great great advice. So, Carrie, with the um, the trends that are happening, any any other trends that are happening that's uh, that's showing where our market's going to be going maybe uh, you know, into next year? Well, as long as the interest rates stay as lovely as uh-huh. they've been and our, our continued growth and job opportunities here in the Northwest are here, I just think we're going to s- still keep tracking. Now, yes. I know I have a lot of friends in California where their market in the Bay Area is a lot slower. Mm-hmm. Their price point's a lot higher, and they've had they've kind of hit critical mass where we're still building in our city, and they have really nowhere to go. Yes. So I, I don't see us slowing down. And before, when we had the slowdown in 2008 through t- through through 2012, we were like the people in the bubble, and they kept thinking mm-hmm. the Northwest is in this bubble, and eventually it's going to burst. But it really never did. We we had a we had a slowdown, but we had the slowest ride on that slow train. Yes, um, and then we were back up and going again. So yep. I don't see in the near future we I don't see us having a slowdown. I really don't. So if one of my listeners uh, was asking you right now today, should I be purchasing? Absolutely. Less competition. Okay. You can keep your heart bait, beat at a, at a normal pace as you go through Not your paying transaction. paying $400 per pre-inspection for 10 homes or whatever it takes yes, to get your offer accepted. Yes, because some buyers were buying, were, were paying for inspectors to come and 
they're like five hundred dollars at a pop, and they were doing it on four houses. So yeah. there's a few thousand dollars that just went into air. Yes, and, you know, investing in a house that they're never going to truly own. So right now, with interest rates the way they are, and not everyone's ready to jump in the pool because we are in. A, you know, we'll know in a week or two about our election. But um, <laughs> until then, I just you know, not even till then. Beyond that, just press forward. We on the Northwest are have such a strong economy right now. Mm-hmm. We're voted the number one economy in the entire country. Yeah, pretty a pretty amazing place to uh, to buy without a doubt. Uh, what about sellers? If they're if they're asking you, should we list now? Should we wait till after the holidays? Wait till after the election? Uh, what are you advising your sellers right now well, today? There's still a ton of buyers out there, and they can take advantage of that. Now, are they going to see the escalations of eight to twenty two percent? Probably mm-hmm. not. But will they? Are we going to see a price below market value? Absolutely not. It's more of a it's more of a real market for sellers, and because there is still a lot of buyers out there. I still will have two and three offers. I just won't have five to 15. Yes. So with those two to three offers, what is the strategy now in that smaller multiple offer environment um, for your buyers to stand out? Well, I mean, when I'm on the selling side, you know, I love the pre-inspection. But when I'm on Uh the buyer's side, um, you know, I encourage them to do that because they will stand out then. Okay. So, you know, it's not like everybody's doing it, though. And a lot of sellers, which I really appreciate, they're having a pre-inspection conducted on their house prior to putting it on the market. And they give that information, share it with all the buyers that are of interest. Because they found a lot of these sellers found that their houses were getting beat up having 14 inspectors. Yeah, to have all those inspectors. It's just crazy. And I, you know, as a seller, why not uh, be able to see what's going on with your home before you put it on the market and get those things addressed and taken care of? Because if it comes up during, especially if there's not a pre-inspection, if it comes Mm -hmm. up during the inspection, process it's a lot harder to negotiate what you're once you're under uh, under contract and I think too if you're representing a buyer really talk to that listing agent befriend them yes um really say how many offers are you having you know when I get those offers that come in and there's no cover sheet and it's just faxed or emailed to me mm-hmm. and they call me like a day and a half later and say well what are you gonna do it's yeah like, you know really re- ha- have good representation someone who really has your best interests who's seasoned who's professional and can really negotiate on your behalf so on that note Karen, uh, when you're uh, talking with buyers if, in finding out how to find that great agent, how do you know that? How do you know that they're, you know, they're going to be representing themselves with the other realtors um, at a high level to where they're, you know, they want to accept their client's offer, that they're going to be doing best for their client? What are some things to uh, watch for or questions to ask well, when think, interviewing? I think, I think talk to your friends that have gone through the process recently mm-hmm. and ask them who they've worked with. Because a warm referral of someone who knows you, likes you, and knows the quality of work that you have is always greater than picking somebody yeah. off the internet. Sure. But that said, millennials like to do things online a lot. And so if you have a good internet presence and they can read actual reviews about you, that yes. is really super helpful because it's not really what the agent's going to say. I think it's more important what the people that they work with say about them and how they work together. Of course. And Carrie, I know you guys are doing amazing things with uh, with your and your team. What do you do that sets yourself aside that you're able to have your business up at the top 1% of the industry? Well, you know, my clients are my friends and I've been, I've been selling real estate now um, 17 years in the Seattle market. And I just want them to have such a great experience that I want them to be a walking, talking billboard about how uh-huh. my team and I and my team's grown. We now have a showing agent. We have a, we have a staging manager. And so um, we just want everyone to, when they say real estate, I want them to immediately say my name, Carrie Scott, John yes. L. Scott. But whoever anyone's working with, you know, I, I want you to have that same experience, too. Like if you work with someone with another agency and you love them, tell people about it because that's yes. what makes our world go around. And that's yeah. what really takes care of the buyers and sellers. So before I wrap up my uh, time with you, Carrie, uh, for a seller, because it's a different hat that you're putting on, you represent both buyers and sellers. A uh, majority of agents do, but it's a completely different hat that you're putting on and representing mm-hmm. a seller. So what are you doing that's unique with your team to provide a higher level of service for your sellers, ultimately netting them more money selling the home in less time. Well, when I sit down with them, I, I find out what their objectives are. Is you know, is this your home? Is it your family's home? Is it an estate? Mm-hmm. How much time do you have to move? What's the condition of your home? And if it, what is your goal on a scale of one to ten? Is your goal to get the very most money that you can for it? Uh-huh. And if they say yes, I say, well, then these are the things I would recommend you doing. Because the more objections you take away from a buyer coming in that's going to look around your house and say you need to do this and that, whether it's paint or carpet or new lighting fixtures or 
or landscaping. Maybe you need to do pressure washing. Maybe that garage needs cleaning out. Mm -hmm. And so I have a whole systematic way, and I have a huge network of great service providers that I put my name to that most of them have worked in my own house or through all my friends' and family's houses that I put my name to that do a great job for my clients. So if they say, kick it in, yes, what do we need to do? Then I give them my honey-do list. Yes. And then I help them manage it. And a lot of these, a lot of my clients, they don't live in the houses. I've maybe sold them something else, and then we come in and do it the house after they've moved right. out. Or some of them just don't have the time to do it. So I offer a huge amount of different service options that is included in just my regular listing fee, mm-hmm. which I think is a real bonus to them because I know if we're willing to do the work on the front side, yes, they will net more on the back side. Yes, definitely. Well, Carrie, thank you so much for joining me back in studio. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Tina. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Coming up next on the Money Hour, are you a rural tour that offers staging? How do you manage the logistics of storing, manage, and moving those home furnishings to and from staging and design projects? You don't have to. Trisha Tomlinson with Staging and Design Network right here at 1150 AM KKNW after this short break.